Previously, we saw what the DDSP file is and what kind of information it carries. Next thing we were able to do is to import it. And as soon as we do that, we see that all the docentric tools are now enabled and we are ready to start working with them. First thing we notice here are some panes. There are two of them here automatically opened. That is because of these two icons here. And there are two more panes that can be opened. I usually have these two always on and I prefer to have this data source closer to me. Then there's a quick builder. Depending on how you're used to working, it can be convenient. I'm not very much used to it and there's live preview. I cannot live without it, so I'm going to switch it on. Let's explain what each of these panes means. Element tree right now is empty, but as soon as we start using the tagging elements, they are our dynamic content, the way of bringing the dynamic content to the design. When we start using them and adding them to the design, they will also appear in the same order here in the element tree. We can check a fully blown purchase order report where it will be clear what will be the result. You see here element tree with a lot of different elements. You can check the icon here. It matches the icon on the toolbar. That's how you will know that, for example, this here is label. This here, you see ABC, it is a field tagging element. This here, it is if tagging element. These three lines, they match this here, that is a list tagging element or a repeater and so on. And not only that they are listed here, they also show us a parent-child relationship. So we will see when element is a parent of some children or this if tagging element, meaning conditionally show or hide something, what is conditionally shown or hidden, these two elements below it and so on. So that was about the element tree. Data source pane is a direct result of whatever we imported with this DDSP file. Remember how we said that it has three important sections. First section was the report to data source schema. Based on that, we see the data source schema here. We see these three sections, main data, parameters, and this main data, you will recognize purchase order header and some transaction and some text lines. And finally, there's a general data, which was added by Docentric. So these two, they come from D365 SSRS. This one might be modified by Docentric if you use Docentric report specific DSP classes, while this one is added always to every Docentric report simply because this current company and worker related information in different reports, they will be in different places. And to save you some time, instead of uh, having to search for them, where are they in header, in lines, in parameters, what are they named? You will find them always here in the same place. So first and most important element from the DDSP file report data source schema, we see it here. Second part was the sample data, the sample values that existed on a purchase order that we used for generating this DDSP file. Well, we have that data also here. If I click anywhere within this main data here or here or here or on, on any field, and then I click this little button here, view sample data, I will see that part of the DDSP file that relates to a sim sample data of my main data section. The same will be here. I will see parameters like document title, some header information, I think is here, record ID and so on. And finally, general data added by the centric. If we click the sample data here, you will see, for example, logo coming from the legal entity. That is something that we would want to use instead of this fixed picture, company information and so on. So first part of the DSP file, the report data source schema, second part sample data. And finally, remember, we had a list of languages in which we want to be able to test our design. Well, 
they are here and based on the language that we select once when we apply the dynamic elements here in the design on the left side in the preview window we will see the correct translations wherever we apply labels we will see their translations in the selected preview language and also where the formatting will be applied like on dates and on numbers we will see the culture of the selected preview language also applied here in the design live preview is simply constantly rendering our design based on our sample data and quick builder before i show quick builder let me add one tagging element one field tagging element let me do the simplest thing without too much explanation let's see how are we doing it so i go in the design there where i want to add a new element i click that element and here i get a dialog where i need to provide a binding source without too much explanation i'm going to select the first field for example amount i have now my first tagging element i see it here in the element tree i see its result here let's not explain too much about it and let's do the same thing by using the quick builder so i will go into this next line i will open the quick builder and from here how would i do the same thing i would first find the source which i want to bring to the design it would be main data i would expand this purchase order header and when i see the field i want to add i would right click here now i get a list of all tagging elements as i see them here and i will say add field in the opposite way first thing was selecting a tagging element and then selecting the binding second approach through quick builder is selecting a binding and then selecting the tagging element but there's one more benefit to using quick builder as you can see here automatically some formatting was applied how come while this element is selected i see it in the element tree and i see this little blue dot or blue icon here and that means that some kind of formatting you see format n was automatically applied when i used the quick builder and here below in the properties i see that format string and i can also click these little three dots where i will be able to use the any applicable format uh, string based on that uh, data source schema our tool knows what is the type of a certain field you see here icons telling you that this is abc for string calendar for a date time one two three for numeric fields this is boolean field this zero one one zero is for binary field so because our tool knows that this is a number type of the field we are offered format strings for number and if you hover them you will see a sample in a culture of the language on your computer so benefit of using quick builder was that uh, it is probably uh, faster if you have to add a lot of fields and they will also automatically get some formatting string but on the other hand i will switch it off because i need to have as much space as possible here on this one screen that i am using for the training if you want you can take uh, any of these panes and move it to another screen if you wish but i have this one screen available for sharing so that's why i will use this layout so with this we finished explanation about the panes in our designer and we will in next chapter see about data sections and sample data no we al already saw that as well so we will quickly see the overview of our tagging elements